everyone welcome to the devos podcast this week with me today is uh, dhruv our special guest hello and vivek hey. and uh, today we'll uh, talk let's start with actually uh, dhruv's uh, project which is called somewhere right? I, I, i hope yeah, not somewhere <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so, so dhruv like it, I, i from what i have heard of it it's an it's a yeah. exploration in uh, adventure and stealth like sort of narrative driven Uh, yeah, stealth yeah. based kind of game. So just just tell yeah. us a, a bit about it. Okay, uh, so somewhere is predominantly a, a narrative exploration game where storytelling drives drives the game forward. But it has uh, elements of stealth uh, woven into how the game plays out. And uh, and th- and throughout the game, you're searching for this uh, mythical city called Kamgar. Uh, and and the game creeps thwarting your search uh, throughout the process. And you know, central to the gameplay is the ability to So you can any character during the game who is part of the narrative. You can simply flip into another character and you know continue your game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty interesting actually. Because it's all like the the switching characters thing is like it's, it's really interesting because uh mm-hmm. like there was this one game which I can't remember the name of but like you basically play for an hour and it ends with somebody okay. dying. Oh, yeah. So oh, like it uh, reminds you that uh no but uh so so if i so hypothetically for example uh, like mm-hmm. i can for example uh, for, for a while uh, play against yeah. a character who's trying to antagonize some other character and then switch to the character who's being antagonized like that yeah yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah exactly but uh, but the thing is uh, because because we can flip characters it also starts to distort the narrative a little bit uh, so the normal roles of the character they keep shifting a little bit so if you might start as a character who is antagonizing somebody and then you flip into the character who is being antagonized you might have flipped into him at a slightly different timeline you now shifting the story a little bit forward or a little bit backward and it gives you a little bit more perspective on what's happening there oh okay yeah so, so uh, just give us a kind of uh example scenario you know that you kind of uh, okay like yeah uh, that we can be give, give it to play in the game yeah so so there was a pre alpha build that we launched a little while ago and uh, it was it was just a test of some very basic game mechanics and how it would play out and uh, very very start as this person who was looking for his author you know he was looking for the world that was written and, and this person is and you don't know why he's looking for the author uh, but you talk to a couple of people in the environment and they tell you to do certain things and you find your author but you don't and even if you find a person roaming around in the environment you talk to him and that person gets inspired by your story you know he gets inspired by the fact that you are searching for an author and he decides to write a story and he writes you basically i mean he's the author and he writes you into the story and the game plays out so that your search for the author loops on to itself you sort of recursively keep searching for your author and the game recursively keeps thwarting you oh yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah this is uh, interesting this is fiction right this is fiction if i what we are building right now is very uh, very closely mounted on top of it maybe we try it, try a couple of variations in the narrative but uh, currently we, we are staying very close to the fiction template and then expanding upon it so now the every time the game loops on itself it modifies a little bit uh, you know revealing a little bit more of the back story of the characters who are who are involved and then sort of integrating all of it at the at the end so it it That's sounds a little bit yeah or uh, it's easier to play and sort of figure figure the game out but <laughs> yeah yeah so something like yeah, that yeah it it definitely seems like kind of uh, like on some level i think it's a bit abstract so like describe it is, yeah. like always kind of tends to simplify a bit yeah exactly. one thing which like Yeah, one thing which kind of uh, this sort of uh, like kind of an aside is that like I find it funny that most like uh, when like Indian developers make narrative-driven games like you are and like I am and like uh, Anshas who was before on the podcast, mm-hmm. we tend to choose multiple yeah. perspectives instead of the yeah. one perspective. You know? Yeah, it's yeah, interesting. That's, that's like true. I wonder if it's I wonder if it's because uh, like we live in a inherently more like I guess. a uh, diverse like, society where you know there's lots of different so like even, for example yeah, there's lots a, of people from different regions languages etc mm-hmm. and that's a, that's a good point 
uh, yeah, that's an interesting point. Never thought of that before. But yeah, our mythological lore and our cultural lore is significantly more nuanced and complex than uh, than what most other game developers start with. So I thought, yeah. you know, one of this is one of their results. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah uh, so as, as, uh, what yeah yeah no no so go ahead saying, like yeah at, at the moment i mean uh, when we started building something we had we just literally had no idea about what we were doing yeah we just video and we just found this interactive medium so right now we are straddling the space between um between formal art world which is not particularly interested in game mechanics uh, more more of storytelling and then uh, an independent video game scene which is fairly exciting and you know and technically proficient so it's somewhere between mm-hmm. that the game that's funky but uh, but interesting nonetheless i suppose yeah so so vivek like, uh, you have actually like uh, worked at like foreign studios and you've also worked at indian studios so like yeah. do you think like any like our, my, my, what hypothesis i just had like holds any uh, weight or do you think there's uh, something else there yeah i don't know i mean i don't i'm i'm hesitant to instantly say that like we have some sort of cultural yeah obviously yeah. immediately <laughs> we have some sort of cultural yeah. advantage because we're automatically more yeah. nuanced and considering yeah. how polarized our society is especially now uh, yeah but i i don't know it's definitely seems to be worth examining that so many developers are trying to look at uh, an issue from more than one perspective i think yeah. that's certainly telling that being said the game i'm working on has one player character and you only see the game through her eyes so yeah <laughs> <I don't laughs> yeah, yeah cop <Cobra> breaker <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah but uh, i i think it is it has also got a little bit to do with uh, the tradition of uh, of theatrical narration uh, you know, uh, southeast asia has a very strong tradition of folk theater and video games translate directly from folk theatrical traditions which you know can be used in other very well but yeah. uh, very yeah. few american or european uh, developers are tapped into this largely because they don't have a strong folk theater tradition not not similar to impromptu theater or nakar kazan mm-hmm. yeah so yeah that's actually interesting because like unrest script like the script of mm-hmm. the game is written in a theatrical style as in uh, you know like how actors come into the yeah. scene and they say their lines and stuff like that so yeah that that mm-hmm. definitely like is in like, theater and like how i mean that's i guess like party just because that's the easiest way to write uh, yeah. you know it's it's and but yeah like definitely i mean it does have inspirations from theater especially like the whole uh, like certain dramatical bits it could yeah. probably uh-huh. like uh, also how the scene uh, shifts in unrest you know from scene to scene it's almost like a yeah. Yeah, it's such right you know you have a transition that's exactly what the, i was yeah. about to say it seems like you're yeah. entering stage left or stage right whenever you walk into any part of the, yeah, the map exactly. yeah so, yeah pretty much yeah back to somewhere though uh, i yeah. uh, i like i can't help but ask uh, the the reason your your use your decide you decided to make somewhere was a game was because you thought that it fit like the kind of story you wanted to tell fit this format well right yeah it doesn't yeah. it didn't necessarily have to be a game yeah it exactly been, yeah it, it, so it wasn't it, supposed to be a game actually but uh, okay yeah it was supposed uh, to be a story first or a play uh, it was supposed to be uh, something of a interactive exhibit i think uh, okay. that's that's my specialization so um, it originally started off as an interactive exhibit and then an interactive storytelling system but more in a exhibition space uh, it's like a gallery perhaps or you know through a projector something like that but and as we take the text space or maybe static visuals something like that all right like it's uh, very different from what what, I, what i've seen because i've like i've i've had a small look into the way you guys develop things and like i've seen yeah. uh, your thought process behind uh, how things work uh, and yeah. it's really cool uh, so like my my question is uh, when did uh, like you know wh- when was the moment when you decided that uh, you know video games work like video games is the is the way like yeah. you wanted to make this into a video game and okay. uh, you know i mean the whole game yeah, over yeah. like it's it seems to be like it's about a journey like no i mean uh, well i was as building this and i was i started using unity uh, on and certain you know video game tools that's basically build it um and and at the same time i, I started looking into independent game development you know this is the first time i saw blade or ds the games like those the iconic indie games and i mean i was amazed at these of culture that exists so in, in part to become you know to become a whole that subculture and in part to do much to 
you know, where I'm deriving the inspiration for the project from, I, I decided to turn it into something like it. And it eventually spiraled out of control. And yeah, now okay. it's, it's, it's become a game, basically. So Yeah, I mean, because what I've, what I've seen now is, is a full-fledged game. It's, it, there yeah, is, it's, it is not something yeah. that uh, would necessarily fit well as an interactive art exhibit. Uh, yeah, exactly. It, 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 because it has it has the language that video games have, you know, it has this, the language that certain stealth games have, where you have to hide. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that yeah. that's going to be like. I mean, were you worried about accessibility when you made that decision? Because uh, not not accessibility, more more of a of a honest homage to the games that we are pulling from. Uh, so so to to be able to understand what video games are, I started playing video games. So you know, probably the first time, you know, these video games have been asked before. Uh, the specific video games, I mean, uh, TV for, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and, and when, when we directed, you know, elements from those games and put them into our game, I wanted a certain portion of the game, like quality, so I could reflect into this. As far as possible. It's, it's tricky to balance, but yeah, something like that. All right. Uh, no, like, I mean, my question about accessibility was specifically, were you worried that, I mean, an interactive art exhibit, a lot of people will be able to, like, a text based with image overlays, that's yeah. something that, more people will be able to access. Uh, oh, okay, this, right. like this, what you're creating now has a specific language that video games have. Like, you know, like I yeah, said, like yeah, yeah. like you just said, it, it has the iconic moments from Thief where you're crouching and you kind of yeah, have yeah. to hide shadows and light yeah. based action and stuff like that. It also has possessing other characters to look at the yeah. game from their point of view. It, it yeah, has yeah. the language of video games very deeply ingrained into its DNA. Are yeah. you worried about how accessible it's going to be to someone who, doesn't understand that language now? Um, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> at this point, I'm quite willing to ignore all those people. Uh, okay. You know, <laughs> sort of in contempt of the fact that they never played video games because I feel a little bit superior at the moment, having played some of the video games they have. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but, Fair uh, enough. <laughs> yeah, maybe when I started, I would, have, I would have been worried about that. But I didn't think about it much. And then, yeah, now it's, it's a video game. <laughs> uh, we, we are the, uh, planning to display it at, a, at an exhibition, but the exhibition is tailored to, uh, to, to video games. So I don't know how it's going to turn out. It's a standard production on it. So, yeah. Well, like, I mean, these things, you never know how they're going to turn out. It's just, it's interesting just to see how people react to something, right? I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, the, exactly. that's the reason you go to these things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I mean, uh, the one thing that I've always found a little odd about mm-hmm. about it is, uh, you know, I mean, the 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 reason to put stealth in, which like I mean, is weird because in most games, uh, yeah. stealth exists so that the player can uh, can hide and like you know, it is either a predatory thing, yeah, or, it is, or, or it is a survival thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is uh, the first game where uh, which like I think stealth is explicitly about being a voyeur. Yeah. You are exactly. asking the player to to like watch what other people are doing. Yeah, uh, yeah. and we are trying to exacerbate the fact. You know, now you can listen in on conversations while sneaking. So basically, uh, yeah, you are a very nasty person when you are in stealth mode. Uh, uh, some, somehow, uh, hostile game versus the stealth is very clear. It's black and white. Right? Like you are hiding somewhere, and some there is an enemy outside. That is why you are hiding. Uh, yeah. But but here, if I do not tell you why you are hiding, and there's no no um, no imperative reason to hide at all, and you're still hiding, that makes you a slightly bad person, you know, because you are given control over a over a person and a character, and he's not going to hide, and he's just uh, behaving normally in that game environment. But you are making him hide, and then you are making him sneak around and skulk around and listen to other people, and that starts affecting the game eventually and the narrative. Uh, I I like that. I like I like to put the player in that. Uh, you know, in serious sort of a mode, yeah, because that is, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he felt, felt like that to me, and because I was, I was hitting people on their heads, and uh, yeah, just talking around, uh, and I never felt heroic in that game, somehow, I mean, dishonored, you feel heroic, because you can jump around, but yeah. thief makes you feel like a gutter rat, something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, but it, like, you feel like an exceptionally skilled gutter rat. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, definitely, uh, and I'm very deadly least... one. Yeah, I mean, at least in the original couple of thieves, like your walking is really very rickety. So to yeah, master yeah. Garrett in itself is like different. So even if you are actually pretty skilled, like walk that, that requires literal like skill from you. Like when I start playing yes. thief, for example, like I'm not the same skilled person who I am after like spending 30 hours with the game. 
so it yeah, feels like yeah. like i also become a thief in that game you know like <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it sort of uh, yeah. falls you into the game yeah and dishonored yeah like it it in dishonored like there's two things i think one in which you know like in which how you always look down at people you know like you are yeah. always at the top somewhere like and you're looking down at them so that's also like in thief you are looking up always you're crouched in a corner somewhere and if a guard yeah, comes yeah, up then yeah. you look up up to them so i think that yeah. also kind of matters and also the fact that like this one gives you all these like cool abilities and weapons that are inherently <laughs> intrinsic yeah yeah it practically makes you invincible yeah uh, so uh like this is your second game right uh it's you you made a yeah, game so, called oxygen so, uh, oxygen uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay, only right now. Uh, we even released the game as such. Yeah, so not complete. Uh, okay. That 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 was an experiment. Have to see how big the build. Uh, it was based on an idea my fellow uh, had on a board game, and then we just turned it into a video game. Okay. Uh, and also we also ran through just a very tiny Kickstarter process just to see how it works. You know, things like that. All right. So yeah, it, it's a puzzle game. It's really interesting. As a, uh, I mean, this this. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing a very good job convincing people to play the game, but uh, it, yeah, I think you are like you kind of, <laughs> you're kind yeah, of underselling it, yourself. Yeah, <laughs> kind of being uh, too modest. As, yeah. As a consumer, I'm just trying to that game, you know, trying to figure it out and like, make it a little bit better. But yeah, I don't know. I don't like that game so much. <laughs> But uh, it, it it's fun when you play it uh, as a two-person multiplayer game, uh, or even as a single-person uh, puzzle game. It's a tiny game, so yeah. Yeah, again, like I agree with Arvind. I think you're underselling uh, O2 because it, it it's a pretty interesting game. I like I mean from uh, what I've seen, it it looks really, really interesting. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I haven't built a lot of it recently. I worked on it a little while ago, but haven't come back to it for some time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I think part of that is because you know, like as developers, like when we see our games, mm-hmm. we see only the flaws. Like we don't I, see the nice. good that we've accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you guys are talking about, man. All my games are flawless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, with, with, uh, with somewhere I know where the flaws are, but I also know that I mean, it, it is a deeply flawed game at this point. It's very, very clunky, but. But I know that eventually we'll get there, and you know, there are things that I can put inside. The Toxin it was always a very simple game, and I know that it can be done better in this way. Uh, but I'm not really willing to work on it so much as I'm willing to work <laughs> on some way. <laughs> yeah, it's just me being lazy, I suppose. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you also have to work harder. Like, I mean, you also want to work on the project you're excited about. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. I don't know. Like, I think it's it's a, it's fascinating because. Uh, for any game that you're working on you do have like you have you know you can see the warts and the weird thing yeah. is you still like you still like the damn thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, that's that's one of the weird things about being a game developer when you when you know what is wrong with uh, like with what you've made but you still have an attachment to it that's yeah uh, yeah. yeah like i mean that that doesn't make any rational sense uh, well all right like kind of does but kind of doesn't <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Arvind will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. No, I think definitely. I mean, of course, like we like our own games. Like obviously, otherwise you wouldn't have made them in the first place. But then you also see the flaws. So yeah, like it's definitely. Yeah. I mean, usually by the end of like the dev cycle, I'm pretty much sick of my own game because I've played as it like a billion times. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, especially when you're playing your game and you you know there's this uh, bizarre fault in it that you do this and then you do that and you you can't solve it and you hope oh, the player doesn't do that and yeah, every time you, every time that you play the game and somebody else plays and you know oh, what is coming yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I see it all yeah yeah so so anyway uh, when is it kind of coming out like when is it uh, game uh, uh, uh since we turned it into a game we'll probably be releasing it uh, normally but uh, initially that wasn't the plan uh, we are going to go through a couple of residency programs and display it and a couple of exhibitions we are still doing um, so one version of the will be the alpha will be released in at the end of this month and also exhibited uh, part of a larger exhibition and then uh, then 
we might do a crowdsourcing campaign or we look for uh, one one time investor into the game and see how soon we can finish it uh, but sometime next year i think middle of next year okay now so so anyway uh, okay let's move on to a game i think which all of us have played yeah <laughs> so uh, i just finished gunpoint this past uh, like week or something so I have a lot like it's fresh in my memory. I don't know how fresh it is in yours, but like it's pretty fresh. Yeah, I, yeah. I played it a while ago. I think when it launched, uh, but but yeah, I remember most of it. So, so Dhruv, uh, like, what do you like most about Gunpoint? What you didn't like, and so on? Oh, I I absolutely love that game. Uh, it's it's less of a puzzle game, more of a puzzle game, and that's that's what I love about it. Yeah, you know, especially the interconnecting. Objects and it just gets so bizarre, and you can do some really weird stuff with it. It's it's beautiful. I mean, what I what I the only thing I didn't like about the game is how short it is. You know, it just it just blinks and it's over. But yeah, I really like that game. That game is one of the few examples of a working Rube Goldberg simulator. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can set up an elaborate set of switches, <laughs> like can can have this fantastic cascading effect on one another. Uh, it's really so I think, cool uh, yeah i mean like uh, you can sort of make it a like group goldberg simulator but i never felt the need to i mean most of the times i just like found a switch and i found the thing that i wanted to wire and i pretty much just wired it i mean yeah. like i don't like I, it but, is possible but i don't think like the game like kind of like requires it. yeah yeah I, i think i i spent most of my time forcing Forcing the solutions onto the game. So if I could solve a level normally, I would I would just stand there and then figure out some very convoluted way of doing it. I guess <laughs> that is what made it enjoyable. And the game lets you do that, but it doesn't really, as you said, force you to do that. Hmm. Yeah, the game is actually I think one of the more laid-back games in terms of how you want to do it. Like most of the times, the game just like presents the level and then gets out of the way. And though I think at some like sometimes I do want kind of more complex levels, you know, than we have currently because. But but yeah, like I, the levels are kind of um, the wiring is is can be pretty complex, but you never need to move yeah. beyond like switch to this to that. I think yeah. Um, you can you can do it. Like, Yeah, you can sort of solve one level and then go to the next. Sorry, you can solve all of them at the same time and then just walk and breathe through the level, something like that. You know, so yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I would have liked, uh, like there are some levels to where that like higher level of play where you are just like you without moving from the the your starting spot, you just kind of do whatever like your objectives <laughs> and then just calmly walk away. <laughs> that yeah. would have been interesting. <laughs> In, in fact, in some levels, you can almost do that. You know, you can just stand on the bottom floor or outside the building and rewire half the building for most of your objectives, like kicking people with doors, and then just walk your way through the levels. You know, just jump once and then, you know, hack and then go over something like that. What I found interesting about Gunpoint is, it, like, I mean, it is one of those few games that, you know, when people say 2D is much better for stealth than than yeah. 3D. Yeah. I think Gunpoint makes that case about as well as it can be made. Like everything works, the story works. Uh, as nonsensical as it is, the yeah. the level design is is pretty phenomenal. Like I I like the fact that the levels weren't complex because uh, the one thing that they do allow you to do is that even though the levels on first glance aren't complex, mm -hmm. you can do some pretty elaborate things in them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean that's that's what I enjoy about it. Uh, sorry uh one no, one was the narrative was uh, when and in this way found the core key to the narrative was really fun and if you make fight or math and you can select some of that as a really funny uh, but in general it just became so bizarre complex you know i i started following what the what the story was trying to say you know whom i was supporting and you know what was the mystery because there was no real mystery to it every time you end up at the level anyways and that But that distinction between a level and the narrative that was a little discovered. You know, I mostly know during the game, but you know, if you think back upon it, I can't recall the story of it. I can't possibly tell anybody the story except in you know broad outline. Well, on a broad level, I do recall that it's like basically about corporate espionage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But the characters are uh, just very vague. Yeah, no, I do love, like I like the story is kind of okay, 
but i do love the format it's told in you know like whatsapp <laughs> style messages and especially the part oh, where yeah. you can just disconnect it immediately <laughs> and yeah. this is you know or you can just start the mission at the first kind of thing yeah. and i think that uh, in some ways like the creator's experience is clearly like because like that cre- the creator was a former games journalist so i think yeah. like, he was kind of like i don't want anyone else to be like oh my god look another unskippable cut scene <laughs> so yeah so i'm just going to get a start mission button and end mission button right in the Yeah. But but I I saw that undermined the story a bit. Right? Yeah, it, it just kept making me feel like the story was on the bottom. You know, just get to the game quickly and keep solving these yeah. intricate levels. Yeah, the story was more. I think the story art was actually provide a little bit of humor to the to, to the thing because most of the yeah, things yeah. like what you're doing is pure theory. You know, like you you go to random buildings, yeah. you steal everything, you break all their windows. Like you, yeah. you all, you can learn about all the art. What? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I think this story just kind of like makes it a bit lighthearted, which I think like yeah, is yeah. good because like if the story had tried to take itself seriously, then yeah, it then like have. the game might have yeah fallen on its like face kind of. <laughs> Literally, it it just falls yeah. on its face every time it jumps. <laughs> That's a nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do like yeah. the jump. Yeah, I, and I love the 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 window, window breaking part. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, often in levels where like I knock knock out all guards, like I just break the windows and like. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. two yeah. things yeah. I love are in that game are breaking a window, but what I like more is breaking a window and barreling straight into a guard while and like uh, punching uh, him with the dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's the. Yeah, that's the police level, right? Where the guard is standing right there next to the wire jack, and like as soon as I saw that, I was like, "Yes, this is the moment I was training for all of my life." <laughs> yeah, that's definitely yeah. yeah. I think it's it's a great game. Do I think like one kind of about its structure is that like it's it's too short. As in, like half of yeah. the game is basically an extended tutorial, and then as yeah. soon as you start to get towards like the bigger levels, and that's when the game ends. So I mean, I guess yeah. it's like on one hand it doesn't overstay its welcome. On the other hand, like I kind of like thought, you know, a four or five more levels would be kind of yeah. nice. Yeah, it is. It is a very very short game. Uh, but I think I think there's a level editor now, so you can. Yeah, that that was a welcome yeah. addition. Yeah. I don't like. So, I think I think he did a good thing by leaving you wanting more. Not enough games do that. You know. Yeah. Too yeah. Too many games overstay their welcome. uh yeah like i i actually like yeah like when like overstaying its welcome is literally should be the first subtitle of marlo bricks which was uh, like a b movie kind of game i'm not sure if you heard of it no drug no no okay yes it's okay yes so that game basically is a one mode joke where like there's a mm-hmm. but, okay okay but tell him the opening of marlo bricks it's such a good opening man <laughs> like what? What happens with that? Because I honestly don't remember what. what Marlo Briggs is a firefighter from Los Angeles whose girlfriend uh-huh. is an archaeologist working in the deep, like in in on some Aztec ruin, and they it's find. Like, okay. No, it's not Aztec. I think it's like African, right? Like that's the. No, no. Aztec, are they in Africa? So, uh, like it is like a stereotypical kind of African slash Aztec thing. Probably Aztec, yeah. Yeah, but so it's not like okay. the game is like super nuanced. Let yeah, you know. the game is <laughs> nuanced about yeah. where she's archaeol archaeologizing yeah. whatever she's doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is an awesome word, by the way, archaeologizing. <laughs> uh, so, so basically, she finds this sword and uh, this ma- like a, a mask of death there, and mm-hmm. it turns out her bosses are evil because you know story reasons, and they murder uh, they murder Marlo Briggs and they take her away, but. Because oh, like, her with the magic sight, like there's there's yes. a sight. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but because the mask, that, yeah. mask of death is there, like it brings Marlo back to life, and then basically the rest of the game is kind of like oh. an action, <laughs> like action platformer. What do you call it? It's a God of War, basically, like a, a yeah. low, low, low uh, budget. It's God low budget God of War, but it's <laughs> so like I mean, it knows what it is and it does its yeah. job. Really. Yeah. So um, yeah, like it. I think the game has been. Yeah, like the game would have been much better if because like the game has one joke to tell and it tells the same thing every time. Like Marlo Briggs does very B movie stuff. He has this like corny lines and then he jumps away and like yeah. everything explodes. 
that literally uh-huh. just kicked off every single level. I think in the first ten minutes of the game, you have more explosions than you have in probably the first three Call of Duty games. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. like, I, I played the first like I played Call of Duty one, two, and four, and, mm-hmm. and Modern Warfare two, which is like five, I guess. Yeah. So and like yeah, even in the first ten minutes, Marvel Briggs has more explosions in in, <laughs> the, in that. <laughs> but yeah, like definitely, yeah. like yeah. No, yeah. yeah. How, how old is the game? Uh, I don't know. Like, it's like, yeah, it's like one dollar on Steam sales I, right now, I think. So like, if you just want to like. See what what it's about. Then yeah, no, probably not gonna get cheaper than that. <laughs> but yeah, like is one. But yeah, like coming back to what we were discussing about gunpoint. Yeah, like it's yeah. it's good that the game kind of left us wanting more. Like rather than. Yeah. But on the yeah. other hand, I think yeah, like I would have still wanted more after like three or four levels. So. <laughs> so so I guess yeah, it's kind of like, but. But it's nice. But like the game is pretty good, so I'm not complaining. Not like yeah, you know, it's... but. And it's it's just one person, right? Except for some uh, and stuff. No, I or think like is... there was an artist. Uh, I actually got the like the entire big edition with the making of thing. Oh, so okay. yeah, there was an artist and a music guy too. So, ah, oh. and the and the game engine was Game Maker, like which is what it was made in. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. I I, I so, yeah, like, uh, I think he's on. I I heard one of the podcasts. Uh, Crate and Crowbar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Podcast. Tom Francis. Yeah, Tom Francis. Exactly. I forgot his name. Yeah. And in one of the podcasts, he was he was describing the programming of uh, of the bullet mechanics for the for the guards, and that was that was uh, that's a good podcast. I I find the link and send it. But uh, where he is talking about the predictability of a bullet mechanic. So if if he, if you jump off a window and there's a guard underneath who can shoot you, uh, how 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 many chances does he get to miss? You know, how do you program that? How do you program randomness and bullet shots? Yeah, something like that. It's, it's an interesting discussion. Yeah, though I think like uh, yeah, it's interesting because uh, I think the bullet programming and such is that like bullets are pretty much like insta death unless you have that uh, yeah that ability which randomizes it. So I think it makes it like a seventy or eighty percent chance or fifty percent, not less than that, definitely. Yeah, to, yeah. For them to hit. Okay. missing it yeah I, i think they were they were talking about the um, the the intention behind making such an such a instead of instead of bullet yeah. you know, if you could if you could avoid it what would happen to the game and how it would sort of lose yeah. the very very precise quality that it has i think gun point definitely yeah because like if if for example like you for example the, the player character could survive one bullet like they would yeah. die in two hits even then yeah. like the game's entire like way of playing would They change a lot. Change, exactly. Whereas here, you you pretty much like it's like guard spots you instant death, which I think is yeah. nice because like there really is like in most games, for example, like guards enter to the alerted state, and then you yeah. have to hide for some time before they cool down. In this yeah. game, there really is no room to hide. Like if if a guard mm-hmm. is like following you, unless you are on the roof or something, like there is yeah. no room to hide in most of the levels. Yeah, there is so, no yeah. hiding and revealing mechanic. That's that's a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the stealth is you either entirely avoid the game or you become like ultra violent and kill everybody and then not get yeah. detected. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very binary in that like you are either like yeah. dead or you are like outside the guard's vision. Rarely yeah. is is there a thing where you are like being seen by the guard and alive. Yeah. So I think this actually. uh this is a great thing because it forces you to use the the cross link which you have yeah otherwise you would try to like use the jumping and just you know try to uh like, sort of escape. just yeah 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 it makes it more of a puzzle game than a traditional cell game yeah, yeah. yeah. do i like... think like in yeah in some cases like It, there was this big discussion right where pretty much like all stealth games have like elements of puzzle games in them Yeah, like, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, because pretty much any stealth game is about like finding out uh, like pre-existing patterns and like, yeah, and then exploiting them. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, like overall pretty good game. Check it out. Like yeah, Gunpoint, great game. Has the official yeah. Dead Horse seal of recommendation. If that's <laughs> of any any value. <laughs> so. So, Dhruv, uh, what other games have you have you been playing? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I just I just played glitch, I guess, uh, and oh, this is miserable. But I forget who created it. Silver Screen Media, something like that. Uh, it, they seem to be some sort of a studio who make games uh, and other kinds of games. I haven't, I haven't played any of their other games. But I picked out the cycles, I think, from Warped or uh, Indie Static, either of those. And it's a, it's, it's a driving game, uh, but not exactly. Uh, it's, it's, it's mostly dialogue. Then you select a bunch of dialogues while you are driving. And, uh, and all those dialogues lead you into some bizarre existential quandaries while you are driving. And that's, that's what the game is. So you are on this highway and you have two very basic controls which uh, allow you to shift lanes, but that does not really matter in the game. And you can look around it. Okay. So you look to your left and right. And sometimes when you look to your right, there's a passenger sitting right next to you, suddenly out of nowhere. And the car, the car is still moving. And these are hitchhikers. So you pick up about three hitchhikers throughout the game and, and they ask you a few questions and you can ask, uh, you know, sort of investigate their stories. But they generally speak about their own backstories, which are very, very bizarre. And okay. you know, they'll ask you, why are you driving? You can say to get somewhere or because I like driving. And mm -hmm. and then they'll say, yes, it's, it isn't universe constructed like this, you know, out of chaos. And someone is an nihilist you know, and they'll, they'll talk about the eventual end of the universe. Or someone will talk about how blue whales try to keep killing themselves. And, you know, they keep getting beached every time. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, suicide of whales. And it, it can get, it gets really bizarre. And it's intercut with this wonderful, wonderful soundtrack. Uh, with, a, with a very short voiceover introducing each each track as you know as okay. distinct from the next so yeah it, yeah, I think I it has a run uh, time of 15 minutes or so very short game yeah it's really yeah really inter I, I actually I think I've actually played it like I, it sort of slipped out of my mind but yeah, yeah like it's definitely interesting yeah, it's fascinating yeah it's especially so, yeah. because uh, yeah I mean, I've been playing, playing some of some very similar games recently, with, which are dialogue heavy, which give you a certain amount of limited choices in the dialogue. But for the most part, they uh, you start branching the dialogue away from reality very, very quickly. You know? So what is happening on screen has got very little to do with what is happening inside the dialogue. Uh, and and I mean, Kenta Kiri does it best. You know? it's, they are absolute geniuses. Uh, but uh, but I like that you know you have you have two distinct tables on the screen at the same time you know the visual one and the one that is created through text. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, Arvind, did you play Kentucky Route Zero? I mean, I think both of us are waiting for it to finish, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, I was just about to say that. Yeah. You can play the smaller uh, builds that are released in between. Those are yeah, really good. I actually played. Yeah, oh, I, I played one of those. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, the art is phenomenal, as is the writing. Uh, yeah, yeah, just something else. Those guys are operating at a different level. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. So, so yeah, uh, like I'm making a game called Unrest. I, I bet like everyone listening to the podcast already knows <laughs> the five people that listen to it. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so yeah, so yeah, Dhruv, uh, how about we start yeah. with you? Uh, just like, just give. Because I'm very interested in knowing how you kind of uh, like approach the demo. What choices did you take? What what you thought of it? So yeah, just just tell me about okay. it. Okay. Uh, so well, I was partly curious uh, about the demo because it is set in India, and you don't you don't really get a lot of chances to play games that are set in India. And this looks like a game that is set in India. So yeah, that that I definitely enjoy. Uh, but but the moment you start playing, I I. I love the conversation options and the small uh, changes to the characters, uh, you know, personality for, for the lack of a better word that keep happening. Yeah. You know, who, who becomes aggressive and all all the characters that yeah. you meet in the in the very get go. You can go back to your inventory and then search through all the character descriptions, which are super. I mean, that level of complexity right into you know two minutes into the demo, I had not expected. You know, I, I'm <laughs> glad I did not have to sit through. A, you know, a narrative section explaining the lore of a game world to me, and that I could explore it at my own own pace. And and then, uh, for for some time, you know, despite the the whole marriage thing, which seemed fairly heavy, you know, conceptually, uh, mm -hmm. the game I, I I thought it played out like a normal, uh, you know, point and click adventure game almost, or a, mm -hmm. or a, or some sort of an RPG game. And, you know, somebody's giving him a quest and go and talk to him, and you know, something will happen. And I kept expecting that to happen. Uh, but but obviously it takes a very drastic and ugly turn halfway through. Uh, I mean, uh, right at the end actually. So I, I had no no idea that I'll I'll get ex executed. You know, and 
and by the time i go and talk to the bridegroom and you know i don't really like him he's yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah. go and talk to his father who is even even worse uh, <laughs> and then come back and i just refuse and and then i get executed i was just like what <laughs> and and then i then then i found out that the game would continue from that you know even if i get executed the game continues it was just splendid it was fantastic yeah i, yeah. I had a lot of fun with the demo definitely <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you <laughs> liked it. But though it's technically a demo, so no spoiler warning needed. But yeah, just in case somebody like oh, yeah. is. But, <laughs> but yeah, like there's lots of other ways you can like the demo can happen. Um, yeah. So Vivek, like what what ending did you get? How did you approach it, for example? Uh, well, what did I do? Let me see. I stole some jewels from the uh, from the pile in, in the in the big uh, mansion place. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. there were two piles. There was one which is the dowry that you're supposed to take, and there's another filled with cash that you're not supposed to take. Uh, mm-hmm. And I took from both. Like I took the dowry and I took, I took the cash I wasn't supposed to touch. I bribed the guard so that I could get out with it. Uh, and I haggled while bribing. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then I think I think the plan. Like I mean, I think I thought I could buy a horse or get the naga merchant to sneak me out. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what did I do? I talked to the Naga merchant, and he was like, "Here, you can buy supplies." Mm-hmm. So I think I bought supplies. I don't remember what I did after that. I don't remember what happened after that. I did yeah. think I do think I escaped. Okay, yeah. yeah, because there's actually yeah, like if you if you escape via the Naga merchant, you go into the city. But if you escape via horse, you go the opposite direction. So that's also different. So. Uh-huh. No, I I escaped with him because like I mean, uh, no, I couldn't get into the stables, so I I escaped with him. Okay, yeah. yeah. There's there's a part of interaction with him where you can go back to your father and get a toy from him and then yeah, go yeah. back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I started on that I think somewhere in the middle of the game. Yeah. I don't know. Like the 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 stuff that I found really really interesting was were the situations that seemed. Uh, Like that seemed really fresh because you don't have this kind of uh, like you generally don't have villages sketched in such a way where everyone is dependent on the other person in such a kind of overtly political scenario wherein yeah you know if you decide to say no it's not just you who's affected it is your family also and it's your probably even your community at large as well and there yeah. is a relationship between both communities and both castes in that village. and there is a specific relationship that both those communities have with the leadership and the authorities in that village uh yeah. and it's a very very tenuous and kind of uh like shit any bad stuff can happen at the drop of a uh, at the drop of a hat it's like in in that sense it's a very well sketched out situation uh i i i've told you what my reservations are about the demo right i yeah. mean i've told yeah but like i mean the just just how fresh uh that that situation feels i think just carries carries the game uh along with the fact that like every character feels uh like a human being like i here's the here's the compliment it feels mm-hmm. like you know that in the 80s bollywood had that new wave cinema uh, like thing where the, you know the the push was for believable characters it feels like that bollywood more than <laughs> or more yeah. of bollywood it feels like uh, these people are real and and that uh, they're not character yeah <laughs> yeah this was yeah, uh, that thing in you... fact in, sorry in fact in the short uh, duration of the demo to get uh, get somebody to empathize with with a, with a character like the like the protagonist who was about to get married i mean that's that's not a normal situation not easy to empathize with but you know by, by the time it ends any any way it ends you know you it's I and mean, you you have ended up empathizing with the character which is which is very very impressive for such for such a short demo you yeah. know i mean the dialogue does the uh, probably you know gets you to yeah and like the of, interesting thing is it you don't just empathize with the player character you empathize with yeah, everyone yeah. you empathize with her parents you empathize even if you're listening carefully you empathize to that woman called radha who's smoking a hookah outside her house <laughs> yeah uh, i mean my like my only reservation is that is not how they would say it uh but that's like a separate yeah. thing that has nothing to do like i mean i enjoyed the day yeah definitely so yeah <laughs> yeah thanks by the way for like yeah liking it i guess because i wasn't actually uh yeah like by the way like this wasn't pre rehearsed so i didn't know like 
that we we can bro would be so positive but yeah like <laughs> glad okay, to really like that yeah screw your game man <laughs> <laughs> uh no it's genuinely like i mean it it is genuinely i found it i found the situation really really fresh and different and if that is consistent uh, throughout the game then yeah like i think i think you've done your job really really well yeah oh also i i like how the uh, and i this is something you might have covered during the starter campaign or leading up to the demo when i, I hadn't followed it uh but how the uh, snake characters are at normal i mean nobody is wondering at their presence you know you just walk up to them and talk to them like normal people i, I mean sort of normal people and they're still outcasts of a certain kind but yeah i, uh, I like like how that you know soft touch of fan- fantasy is brought into the game no oh, it it has a strong mythological flavor to it yeah i mean i was actually uh, yeah that was one thing which uh, like i kind of wanted to is that like instead of you know mythological characters you know who like for example in in usual kind of fiction you have elves yeah. who are basically like haughty kind of you know like men <laughs> who the hell yeah. are these humans and and like dwarves who are like yeah who are basically like drunk all the time so we wanted yeah. like to have characters who like who shared like the, the naga are clearly different like they're not exactly the same and like yeah. this kind of like the difference kind of comes in later in the game but yeah like at least to like make them also like like believable people you know instead of having this yeah. like completely outlandish kind of race that yeah 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 no, that, that that worked really well <laughs> nice touch yeah, yeah. okay okay uh, so how many people so are working on the game sorry yeah uh, okay uh, let me just yeah let me count that i am doing the programming then ratskan is our writer yeah. then mick is our artist and uh, ross is doing the scripting so that's four people full time then jafar okay. like who who worked with me and vivek and is is like our friend like he did the animations so he was okay. pretty much like full time till the end of this month because like he was yeah. he did a super job like something like uh, like a thousand animations or so like oh, not not okay. maybe not thousand but probably so i think like more like 200 250 something like that but yeah, yeah. so then jafar did a awesome job and the, yeah that's pretty much it then music i got via my college friends like mm-hmm. this was music the music was actually done like pretty much like 8 months or so ago so, oh okay so yeah that pretty much the team so all of us like i think like if like we went to rest which was a convention that's the only time three of us met otherwise oh. we haven't been in the same room at any point yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah that's i think that's actually kind of one thing which like you said about the scenario right one thing which mm-hmm. kind of helped is that uh, like because all of us are from different countries so yeah. like i when i was like i wrote the outline of the game and the major characters kind of thing so mm-hmm. then like you had to have ratskan like he shows up and he says wait these motivations like i don't think they make sense and then i'm like okay what about this yeah. what about this justification and then like mick who's estonian so then he comes mm-hmm. in and he's like wait wh- what's this for like why does this mean <laughs> so yeah. this was like so they you have all these people who are like of different kind of from different places different cultures etc so i think that yeah. kind of strengthened the game like you know we yeah we kind of found out it. about a lot of the because like there were things which i was like ha huh, like yeah like i had not thought <laughs> of that like the whole escape thing yeah. like mm-hmm. like it, that was not in my original draft of the scenario i was like oh. then, but then like mick uh, who the, the guy the artist he was like why yeah. didn't she just run away like why is she like you know <laughs> like why does she yeah. either have to like accept the marriage or die so i was like hmm, that's a good point like why does she just she just run away so and then like some other endings were suggested by like the other part other like people of the team so yeah that that's pretty much how it went every scenario was like so 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 yeah <laughs> that's really I could like go on and on about this so like I'll just yeah how how long did it take you to uh, to reach the stage i mean uh, you're releasing soon mm-hmm. right yeah it's it's coming out in one month game is almost content complete now only just yeah. bugs and stuff left so yeah like it it comes out on 23rd july so pretty much in exactly one month right? yeah yeah so how, how long did it take you to build up to the stage uh so like it it has been uh, the game was basically made like remade once like 
it started oh, okay. two years ago with like the team mm-hmm. from Will Fight for Food, and at that time the game was completely different. It was supposed to oh. be an open world RPG, and like you laughed when I'll tell you what it was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, was, it was supposed, supposed to be, be a multi-city open world RPG. Yeah, yeah, I oh. and, yeah, and <laughs> I not even that. Like, over world map. <laughs> yeah, and not even that. Like the three cities which were supposed to be there. One oh, of them God. was based in ancient <laughs> India. One of them was yeah. on of Chinese architecture, and one of them oh. was of uh, sort of like Aztec type architecture. <laughs> so it was basically this alternate alternate fantasy thing, Fiction. which yeah. like was completely yeah, completely outlandish and had like a Final Fantasy style plot. Just okay. like complete like, it like the, the things that happen in the game, like you you will see similarities of the from the original draft, but like it's yeah. a vastly like. Focused design, which is like Unrest 2.0, which what we did. <laughs> so yeah, like yeah. I like this could be like yeah, I could just go on and on about like how. So what you're talking about <laughs> is that your process mirrors very closely Ken Levine's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, on, I I don't know how he works, <laughs> but like because I haven't seen, but yeah, like I bet like sometimes the, because when you start, because when we kind of started like that was the original Will Fight for Food team, so we were like yes. We have made a game, so now anything is possible. We can do everything, <laughs> and then like you know, reality kind of hits after a while. Yeah. And then, so yeah, like I think like the the one thing which I've kind of learned from artists is scope. Uh, like yeah, that's among lots of other things. But yeah, scope is probably the biggest which like I've yeah. done. And and I still don't doubt that the next game I make will do the same thing. I'll probably massively overestimate again, and then <laughs> I'll have to. Uh, simplify the design again. So yeah, but but yeah. So but that's it, the fun part. I mean, you, like I mean, yeah. you have to start with a massively overscoped idea. Yeah, that that's uh, actually meh, so peculiar because it's it's uh, it's in some ways a reversal of our process. Um, because uh, because many many times I, I'm I'm working on on ideas on paper and I do not know you can do this in games. You know, I haven't played enough games to know that. Uh, so then halfway through the development, I discover oh you can do that. Oh, I need to do something like that. And then I try and mangle it into the game, it work, uh, but then it, it results into something else, and it keeps expanding and bloating like that. So yeah, <laughs> you start off with something much simpler, and then you end up as much more complex. Yeah. yeah, it's lucky that that works out because sometimes when you see something new and decide to put it in, what, like keep putting it in, what what you end up with is you duke him forever. We 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 don't just go around uh, chucking ideas into the game that way. Uh, but no, but no, I, I'm, I'm I was yeah. I was <laughs> Yeah, it's more from uh, several different sources. You know, even even from books and uh, you know other characters and the storylines and how authors handle it, and that sort of bleeds into how how the game is being written. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One thing which I like this kind of feature creep thing. Like one thing which we did, which did benefit on Rist was that throughout mm-hmm. like this creative process, like I was programming the game. So the so pro code wise the game, like we never scrapped the code. Like the code kept getting better. Yeah. So, like usually, hmm. like, for example, like my my first game, like and my second game, that was kind of like eight months of work in programming in between them. But this one is okay. like much more robust because there's been like double the, of that, so almost yeah. like seventeen, eighteen months of work. Uh, oh, so yeah, like I think <laughs> yeah, long time. Yeah, for, so it kind of depends on like what background you come from. I mean, like for example, like if I were an artist, for example, yeah, then I would yeah. probably have. Gone with the the thing because then I could have just kept on like drawing stuff because like yeah. uh, when you have to see who can put in the most effort from all of your team. So yeah. if if that so if the game is kind of programming heavy, then you try to move all tasks to programming and try to minimize what the artist can do. And like if you're yeah. an artist who's heading and who's working full time, then you try to do as much as you can so that like the only certain things are required from the board. And yeah, like unrest on a whole, like yeah, it's just been like lots of stuff has just been like come from pure luck. For example, like I <laughs> sort of like I found my artist on Reddit because I had I made a post uh, that was like, oh my god, my previous artist is gone. What do I do? And then this guy <laughs> responded, and he turned out yeah. to be like a really brilliant artist. Like, and at least to me, like and from what like, and from the time he had and from the budget he had, like. I I think he yeah. like blew away my expectations. So yeah, like lots oh. of stuff here. Yeah, also like luck happens. Like, but yeah, like it's just been yeah so many things which kind of like you know contribute to like what you see just in the demo. 
like not and then there's yeah. like full game which is kind of coming out so yeah so that was the dead horse podcast for this week uh that that's that's me signing off andro okay uh, thanks um, thanks for having me <laughs> yeah no problem at all you welcome it was really nice talking to you yeah yeah same here <laughs> yeah and we wait like